He said, well, we're still going somewhere. And there was a lot of things they had to cancel and stuff. And they wanted that intern from the church. And that worked out. And she said, we're still going somewhere. And I go, Shelly, once you get yours, she never can go. <sighs> but I said, Kelly, if the Lord means for y'all to go there, you just go. I just took it as a divine invitation. Amen. I did. Mm -hmm. amazing uh, every time God does something it's amazing and we watch it and sometimes we don't understand it and the right. first thing we do we get upset generally we don't pray about it we don't say Lord is there a reason behind this and and we get flushed and we all do that and uh, when you get your heart set on something it doesn't happen uh, God says, just wait now, and I'll bring it to pass, and you know, everything will be fine. Now, I wanted to mention this, and this is a, I, I'm not trying to attack women this morning or anything like that, but in Genesis chapter 3, I want you to listen just a minute. Do you know why Adam had to make, had to, had to work and sweat and he had briars and stuff? You know why? Because he got that. Well, yes, but that's right. But what happened was he hearkened unto the voice of his wife. That's what the Bible says. He hearkened. In other words, she was a she was a, a woman generally is persistent. And the Bible says no. And here's what he says to men. Yeah, I heard that. He no. snuck it in. <laughs> so uh, what God said was, don't be bitter against the women. Now let me tell you what, what God said about women. Women are a weaker vessel, right? So, okay, here, did you know that if you don't honor your wife, that... God says your prayers will be hindered. Now, is that pretty stout? If you think about that, if you don't honor your wife, that doesn't mean you do it that you please everybody and that you please your wife and you do everything. But He's saying you honor your wife. She is the one that takes care and does, and and uh, but you honor her. She is a weaker vessel. Okay. Is that true? Not, we're not talking about physical strength. Uh, we're talking about there's times when a woman has such compassion and care. A woman cares about the house, right? Men, we care about the hunting, the fishing, and you know, we do this Don't and do that. Like that. But a woman cares about certain things, and we ought to honor that. We ought to say, you know what? Today, you'll have an opportunity to encourage somebody, to make somebody feel better about their life, about their future. Uh, today is a day that God's made, and every day you get a chance in life to help somebody. Do you do that? Do, uh, just think about this. Okay, now here's the way Jesus responded. He was walking along one day, and he looked over the city, and here's what he saw. He saw men uh, at, like sheep without a shepherd. Now let me ask you something. How do you see people? You dirty, low down, you got your hair colored and pierced, and you got stuff coming out your nose, and God said, wait just a minute. Those people are hurting. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to condemn you. Right. Jesus saw people as sheep, not as lost people. He saw the potential that if they trusted him, they could have eternal life and a great life even here with trouble. But Jesus cared about people. And when we get to where we hate people, we miss God. And 
We see the bad in them. We see we and everything today that's geared in this world is to anger you. Is to get you angry at somebody or something that's happened in your life and never get over it. And God's now go to Malachi. That's the book before Matthew. Uh, do you know how long it was from Math from Malachi to Matthew? That God waited the, how many years between Malachi and Matthew? The Old Testament, and then, by the way, Jesus didn't, God didn't say that was the Old Testament. He said that's the Bible. Right. We got people, they trying to do away with the Old Testament. Right. You don't do away with the Old Testament. Uh, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ because you realize you're a sinner. And you need a savior. Now, how many people, let's just say, do, do you know very many people in this world that even read the Bible? Well, how are they going to know? How are they going to hear? Just think about it a little bit. Right. That, 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 that Bible they read is not going to be this one. They're not going to, if you think I read the Bible, when I was a drunkard and didn't care about it, you think I'm gonna read the Bible? Well, that's the last thing. I didn't understand it and it meant nothing to me. That's why I didn't read the Bible. It didn't mean anything to me. I was living my life my way and I didn't need, I needed God if I died. I don't get it wrong, I needed God, but I just wasn't gonna serve God. You know, I mean, that ain't happening. So Malachi 3, but anyway, it was 400 years. You think that's a long time? 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Before God allowed, you think they wasn't hungry to hear from God? Lord, we need to hear from you. Look in uh, Malachi 3 and 16. This was amazing to me. Now, now hear me now. Adam hearkened unto his wife and ate of the fruit. He hearkened unto her. That's like he intently, okay, by the way, who should have been there with Eve when the devil, oh, okay, Adam should have been there. They was talking, okay, she was talking to the devil. Now here's the point is, who are you listening to? Who are you talking to? Who's talking to you? You better be careful who you talk to. And we need to be, listen, our, our children today, I'm going to tell you something, our children and families today are torn from top to bottom. We, and, it's, and it's not always, you, we blame it on the kids, but it's not always the kids. Right. Because, they, I mean, they, they have a life to live, and, and there's so, okay, and I'm not criticizing divorce. I'm just saying there's divorce, there's murder, there's, there's all kind of hatred, there's unforgiveness even among God's people. So how, and you know, they're watching all this and they're saying, okay, you you say you're a Christian and you, why do you do what you do? Why do you stay mad? You're no different than anybody else. So they just watch you and say, you're no different than anybody else. When we ought to be honest and say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not anything without Jesus. I am weak. Just be honest, don't act like it. Oh, I'm, I'm real religious and I'm this and all this. And God wants you to be real. And real with him and real with the world. Real with what you've done and you are a failure. And you need Jesus. Now, look in 316. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. By the way, do you do that? <coughs> you haven't talked to anybody Number one, do you fear the Lord? You say, well, I, I, uh, uh, well, God says, if you fear me, you're not going to live in sin. Because I'm going to convict you, and you're going to get right, and I'm going to chasten you. That's one thing God does. And now listen, there's not one of us here that can throw a stone. Remember right? I mean, if you think you can throw a stone, and you know we'll line up and let you throw it. And that's what Jesus said to those people that brought that woman in and said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she's caught in the very act and you, what are you going to do? 
Jesus forgave her, but then he said what? Go, go and, and sin, sin no not. More. Don't be living like that. Let's watch you repent. Let's do the right thing. And that's what God's asking us to do. Does that mean you'll never sin? No, not by any means. Okay, then he said that we talk one with another, and the Lord, what's that word? Listen. Hearken. He hearkened and heard it. You, did you know God listens to you? God listens to every word we say. And you know what we're going to get to do is give an account one day of every word we say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, oh, oh. I, I, okay, I was getting my truck worked on. Having an oil change the other day. And uh, it was hot. I left my drink in there in the truck, and Sandra had her drink in the car. And I, I had a girl had my keys, and I said, I'm, I'm going to unlock my vehicle now and go get my stuff. I go out there and it's locked. I come back in, and I said, uh, It's still locked. I said, I, I unlocked my truck now. I need them unlocked. I go back out there. It's locked. So I, it's hot and I'm hot and I'm mad. <laughs> I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> D-A-M, woman. You unlocked what are you doing? The only problem was she was standing right there. I thought she was up there in the office. Uh -oh. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, Lord, I blew that and then I mean, I made a mess out of that. I knew I shouldn't have said it when I said it. It didn't matter whether she showed up or not, so I went and apologized. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I got upset. I got, you know, it, it, I'm sorry. I apologize. She said, about what? But well, didn't see you near me. I'm just saying, you ever get mad? You ever say things? Well, you say, I didn't say it out loud. Then man will never God heard you. He saw you. He knows what you think. He knows what you're saying. And I thought, you know what? If when you fail, this is what we're talking about. You be honest, okay? Just be honest. Now listen to what God did. He heard him. Uh, uh, a book. Of, and now listen to what he did. He hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I wake. Uh, make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth it not. Um, turn to Matthew 9, if you would. Oh, we here at Matthew. Matthew 9. And look in verse 35, Matthew 9, 35. You agree you can you can listen to the wrong voice. Right? Yeah. You, you, you'd be listening to something or somebody and you think, I I'm I, okay, I'm listening. And uh, be careful when, how many of you, uh, and I think we all do this as a, as a Christian, you have a check in your spirit whenever you do wrong. If you're going to go in the wrong direction, we're talking about what Kelly and them was going to do, they, they probably would not have not gone, okay? How many people have almost got on an airplane and they didn't get on the airplane in the plane crash? You look around and say, man alive, did God watch over? How many times has God watched over you? How many times have you been in 
all, all most guys wrecks and all these little things and all through life and you have seen things happen and you 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 know God watched over you. How do you feel when you're in a wreck? When you're in something? Y'all been in one? It's like it's a dream kind of. Yeah, it's slow motion. It's like it's just happening. Now, what's God doing? He's showing you he took care of you. Now, okay. What about times when he didn't take care of you? What about times when he let you wind up in the hospital? What about times when he allowed things to happen to you that got your attention? I was working for Billy Pierce out here in a cross time meal. You want to work? That's the place to work. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we were, had a sweet gun ball, and that sweet gun ball, when you put that dog in there and you run it through the blade, through that saw, he started back and that thing turned sideways and he come over the top and hit me and went out the building and they were just sitting there looking at me. I thought, get an ambulance, <laughs> I'm hurting. <laughs> Went to the hospital and stayed a while. They didn't get my attention though. No, it's, you know, we're bullheaded, we'll do it our way. But yet I had a daddy and a mama and a family praying for me. I had, I had my brother who lived down in Texas and he would invite me to come down and that was one of the few days I saw him because I went down there with him and because he cared enough to do something. Now, let's read this in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness, now listen to this, every sickness and every disease among the people. Now, now, why did he do that? Why did he heal all the diseases? Why do you think, what's he proving? What's he saying? I'm God's son. There's nobody else can do that. I'm the only one that can do that. He's not bragging. He's just saying who he is, okay? Now, okay, he healed all these diseases. Now, I want you to think about this a little bit. Here's what people are saying now, since he healed all of them then, he'll heal you and you don't have to worry. All you've got to do is just say, pray and God's going to heal you. Is that true or not? No. No, because people die every day, right? It's time for them to go home and God takes them home. And God allows these things to happen. Now, can we shorten our life? Can we, can we help people to go to heaven? By the way, what's, what are we called to do? Why doesn't God just save us and take us home? Like because he's got a purpose for it, right? And, all, and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And he's the shepherd. He's a great shepherd, right? right? Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Okay? Now, now just pay attention to that verse. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Okay? So he needs, what does he need? Labor. Labor. He needs somebody to work, right? <clears throat> Would you do that? Or would you say, Jesus, why don't you go do it? Now think about it. Why don't you go save them? You're there. Why are you praying for laborers? Why doesn't God just say, okay, I'm... And, and, you, and we pray for people. Why didn't God just say, they'll be all right. Just go ahead and leave them alone. He didn't say that, did he? Mm -hmm. Then he said, pray you therefore the Lord, the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, okay. If people, turn, turn to Romans just a minute. I want you to see something else. Mm -hmm. 
I made it Romans 11. Yeah, Romans, Romans 10. I'm sorry, Romans 10. <clears throat> Look in verse 10 and 13. Now, what, what do you think? Uh, since God has a problem, he needs laborers. Would you volunteer today to go? Think about it a little bit. Would you volunteer today to go? Does he still need laborers? Is the harvest plenteous? It's white on the harvest. Now what that means is when you see a white field of, of uh, wheat, whatever, then it's ready to be, and there's time to reap. There's also a time when you don't reap. There's a time when somebody's planted and somebody has watered and somebody's done something, but God's waiting on you to do what he's called you to do and he wants you to go. Now, uh, what if we don't go? Well, Brother Danny, I, I, I came to church this morning. Okay, all right, you came to church, all right. Is that what he said? He said, my house is full. Somebody wrote this song. But my fields are empty. You know, that's what he said. He said, I've called you to go. What's the last thing Jesus said was go in all the world? And he said it in Matthew and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them. He said, Now here's here, here's the problem we have. I talked to them and they said no. Well, go to somebody else. Folks, um, how they go, look at verse 13. 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? Don't you notice what follows what he said here? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So who is required for them to hear and how shall they hear without a preacher? <coughs> okay. So who's going to tell them? We're going to watch them? Are we just going to watch them fall up into hell? You say, well, but the other day I went to church. I mean, after all, that's hard. What's hard about that? Right? And God said, I've got a call on your life, and I want you to do something. If you're willing to do this. Now, Isaiah, and Isaiah didn't tell you what Isaiah said. One day he saw that King Uzziah died. And when King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Now, here's what God said to him Who will go for us? Now Isaiah had to answer that. Who will go for us? And he said, Here am I. Send me. Send me. Now let me ask you today. Would you be willing to do what God wants you to do and go tell people? You say, Oh, everybody knows. If everybody knows what's the whole world going to hell for. And why are we going in the wrong direction all the time if everybody knows? But you said, now, now just tell me why we don't go. Well, 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 it might be embarrassing. Now, above that verse right there, he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. Did you know when a Jew accepts Christ? I heard a lady giving a testimony last night. And this lady said, she was singing a song years ago about Jesus. It was just a secular song. And she was singing it, and her mother said, and she said, singing about Jesus. She said, what'd you say? Jesus, don't you ever say that. And she said, later on, I, I got saved. I, I, I asked Jesus to save me, and he saved me. And then, then she went about telling other people 
this is what, this is what bothers. I believe bothers the Lord that the church today is bogged down, sitting around saying we have need of nothing, and the whole world is dying and going to hell, and we won't even as much as mention it. Now I'm gonna tell you, okay, what what happened to people in the in the old, in the New Testament when they got saved? They were fired from their job. They lost their money. They lost their position a lot of times. They were always, but they did. They lost their, everything they had. You say, well, I'm not losing all that now. Wait a minute, preacher. We're not talking about doing all that kind of stuff. Or is God saying, why don't you just simply tell people about me? He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. What excuse do you have? What excuse do I have for not meeting people, no matter what color, no matter what? Uh, you said, well, I ain't witnessing them. You know, these, what? Je well, how did Jesus see them? As sheep without a shepherd. And then he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they, they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Okay? Are you sent or not? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now it goes on to say, faith without faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Brother Jim Simla, I was I was amazed that he, he went down and preached in a country in South like in South America. And after he preached, uh, he was talking to a pastor that had had a stroke. He had all kinds of problems. And he said, I was a young preacher. I just wanted to listen to him and talk with him and fellowship with him because these people were just nearly worshiping this man. He said, I mean, he had won so many to Christ and they just saw he was, you know, just a, such a blessing that God was using. And Brother Jim had preached that night and he said they had this young girl and she came up and was shining his shoe. And he told the pastor, he said, Brother, um, I don't mean to be out of sorts, but said, I don't feel right about her doing that. Would you tell her to stop that? He said, I just didn't feel right about that. Don't be, no. And, and uh, he talked to her in whatever, Spanish or whatever, and she said, and he replied back to him from what she said and said, last night when you preached, God blessed her and said, she knows that verse where it says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. How beautiful are your feet? Wouldn't that be something? You, you wonder why Jesus uh, said, that, well, wash one of those feet. The, the feet. Why, why the feet? Because you care of the gospel. And so, and so let, me, let me say this. I'm not saying you don't do this. But would we pray that God would open doors for us, that we would see people saved, that we would see people come to you? He said, well, Brother Danny, I just don't know. Well, that's lack of faith is what that is. And Jesus said for us to go in all the world. Now, uh, you, do, can you tell me what makes angels rejoice in heaven? Now, getting saved. Soul, getting saved. A soul getting saved. You say, well, wait a minute. No, I think we need a Bible study. That's not what makes angels rejoice in heaven. That's great to have a Bible study. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, if you have great singing, and we did, and we do this morning, that the angels in heaven would just be rejoicing. But he said, and here's what he said. He said that when the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents, there's joy in heaven when that happens. Now, who are you praying for? Who, who, are, who am I praying for? What what are we doing? Now, let me. I think one of the most, one of the hardest things to do in life is to think about somebody that's going to hinder somebody from preaching the gospel. 
Have you had people do that? When you try to win somebody to Christ and you try to talk to them about the Lord and somebody interferes in it and tries to stop it. I remember I was in uh, Clinton, Arkansas. And uh, I was talking to people there at the filling station when they lived about the Lord and they said, uh, that's a strange up here. I said, don't nobody do that up here. Do what? See what I'm talking about? We have a whole generation of people that have been brought up to think that all we need to do is just go to church and we're fine and we've done our religious deal and it's over with and we go home and everything's fine. Listen, folks, we all know we need to live for Christ and our, our light is to shine for people. Now, would you pray with me that today God would take us, take you, take me, and open doors for us that we would be able to talk to them. What about your children? What about your family? What about somebody you hadn't forgiven? What about somebody you hate? God's going to say, oh, that was all right. I mean, after all, why, how did they treat Jesus? And what, now just tell me what he said when he come down to it. Father, you forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do we know what we're doing? I think sometimes we don't. We don't realize that people are perishing every day. People are going out into eternity. And we have preachers just patting them on the back saying, it's okay, man, it's all right. You're all right. You're a good old boy. No, you're not a good old boy. You need Jesus. Now, we, the people that gave this land for this building, uh, Ms. Burns, and uh, there was a couple, and they sang when we were back in this other building over here. And I thought about this this morning. I'm not, I'm not pretty, I'm not, that's between him and God. But he has, she has a son that left the Baptist church, I guess it was the Baptist church, and went Catholic. Now he knows better than that. We're seeing this happen, folks. We're seeing people turn from following what is true to what is not true. Now, if you've ever studied the Catholic religion, and you know, they, they believe that works gets you into heaven, and there's different things, you know. I'm not saying all Catholics are lost. I'm not saying that. He hearkened unto his wife. Uh, he hearkened unto his wife. Yes, he was Catholic. <laughs> That's it. And see, men today are following, and they're hearkening unto their wives, so much that they forget what God's done. There are there are lots of people that's gonna uh, and in our children, let me tell you something, it's time that men, you know what our problem is. How many of you know it's men? It's, it ain't women, it's men that won't take a stand. It's men that won't live for Jesus. Just if you're saved today and you've got Christ, you're gonna have to stand for the Lord, you're gonna have to go against the grain. And that's hard to do. It's hard for anybody to do. I, I have, uh, you know, and you have family members. Now, you think they're saved because they said it. But you know in their life, they don't represent Christ at all. They live like hell, and they could care less about God. They live their life, their way, and when they die, we don't know whether they're saved or not, but they're probably going to a devil's hell and they're going to wake up in hell just one day, just wake up and it's going to be over forever. I told a black man this week in Walmart, I said, listen, what, what, what if you stood before the Lord and the Lord said, I don't know you. Well, I, I read my Bible once in a while. I keep it on my app, you know. Is that what Jesus wanted? Oh, I, you know, I, I just kind of look at this thing. I'm going to make sure, you know, I, I want my insurance just in case. 
That's not the that's not following Christ. That's following you. That's following God. Oh, I want I want my escape route. But do you want Jesus? Well, I don't want to live for him right now. I'm chasing women. And you got that in church just like you got that anywhere. And what's God saying? I call, would you come and would you follow me? And we I heal him power. It's not, it's not, we're not talking about doing something you want to do because you got strength. We're talking about you haven't got any strength and you come follow Jesus and you say to him, Lord, this week I want you to take me and the rest of my life I want to live it and I want to burn out for you. I, I want to go for you. I want to pray. I want to seek God. I want to watch and see what you can do because when it's all, let me tell you something, folks. When your heart stops beating, that's it. And you ain't going to call it back and say, well, Lord, I'm sorry. I wanted to do this. You may have wanted to do a lot of things, but God said, well, I'm calling you today to say, okay, this is what I want you to do. And how many people today will perish because we will not be serious about what God's called us to do? Listen, you have a calling from God. If you're saved, you're called. And God's got, he's got a will for your life. And the hard thing to do is not to get in the way of somebody trying to win Christ. You know what we're more concerned about today? Some little old deadly thing that doesn't make a bit of difference about nothing. And we're so concerned about it that we would not even take time for Jesus and somebody that's lost. I'm going to tell you something. You represent, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying, listen folks, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to scold you at all. I'm just telling you that some of you are doing that a hundred percent. You love God. You love His ways. You're trying to raise your family in the right direction. You're praying and you're seeking God. But God says we're going to have to get serious because the end's coming. And when it comes, it's going to be over. And what is going to happen to our children? Unless the father's a father and, and today they're not. Uh, we're going to lose a whole generation. Do you say our generation is lost? Now, I, I close, but I'm going to tell you why, why a lot of it is. We send our kids out here to a world that teaches them wrong. You pay thousands of dollars, this is what most people do, and they go to a college that teaches them to hate God. I would rather be ignorant for ignorance than to think that they don't need God, that they think they're so smart. What what do we want them to do today? We want them to make good money so they can go to hell rich. Is that it? And God says, you better get serious about this thing. We've got, listen, your children, you can't make them get saved. But I'm going to tell you one thing you can do. You can tell them about Jesus. And you know, they're not going to like it. People don't like it when you talk to them about the truth. But that's why. You know why uh, Stephen was stoned to death? He said, well, he was just you know, having a bad day. No, he wasn't having a bad day. He was telling them about Jesus, and they said, you better shut up. You, you accusing us of his blood being on, on us? Yes. He said, that's pretty stout, man. And they said, we ain't listening to you. I guarantee you one thing, we'll kill you. And that's what they did. He was the first martyr. Can imagine that going to see Jesus? What did Jesus do about it? He stood up. He stood up. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're going to answer. Now, you, you say, Brother Danny, I, I mean, after all, I got my life figured out. I know we do. But we better remember that God's called us to go. Would you do that? Would you today just simply say to the Lord, I don't know how to do this, Lord, but I submit my life to you, and I want you to forgive me of my sin and my not caring, and, and I, I want to be about your business. Now, you know people today that act like they're not listening, but they're listening. They know. They know right from wrong. They know if there's a hell, they know that you say, well, I just don't know if there's a hell. And I, oh, yeah, you know there's a hell. And you, because Jesus didn't lie. If you, if you think this word is a lie, then you're in trouble. 
Jesus never lied, and when he told you something, it's true. And when you die, if you die this week, if your heart stops beating this week, you will stand before God and you will give an account of everything you've done. And every time you've heard the gospel and you didn't respond, then God will have you to answer for why didn't you do that. You say, Jesus, why don't you go do it? He calls you to do it. Now he'll go before you and he'll come after you. But somebody's got to tell me, say it. Would you tell them? Would you just tell them how good God's been to you? You say, well, both any in the world don't like the church anymore, and the world doesn't like Jesus. Well, you do. And we ought to stand for him. It wouldn't hurt probably if half the preachers went to jail for preaching. You say, well, I... I, I don't think you ought to get into the Bible too deep and this and read Romans chapter 1 and see what it says about homosexuals. Well, we don't want to read that because somebody get upset about that. Well, that's God's word. Right? Right. You say, well, I'm a good Catholic. I'm a good Baptist. I'm a good Methodist. I don't care what you think you are. God said if you're not born again, you're going to die and you're going to spend eternity Folks, I don't know about you, but first place I don't want to go is to hell. But I sure don't want my girls going. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Right. And I got two grandsons and a granddaughter. That is what I pray about continually. And you do too, don't you? You, you pray for your family. And I got a great grandson. I got an opportunity when mom and daddy may not be serving God, but I can tell him about Jesus. And if God lets me live long enough, he's going to get to that age. Wouldn't it be wonderful to win him to Christ? But somebody's got to say something. Okay? That's what God's called us to do. Now, when you see your family going wrong, just pray for them. And, and a lot of times, it won't hurt to tell them. That's one thing mom is doing. She don't mind telling them, hey, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. They ain't got a question for it. Uh, my wife thinks that they're going wrong. She's going to tell them. Well, it, it, somebody's got to, right? Well, I want to be nice and I want to be loved, but sometimes you're going to be hated. Mm -hmm. But we just need to tell the truth. Now, folks, could we just do this one thing today? Could we just forgive? Now, I told you what happened in my own life when. And I appreciate you praying because I'm going to tell you, God lifted that burden off of me. Now, what about if we all prayed about God opening the door for us and help us just be an encouragement to somebody <laughs> today in some way? Now, last Sunday, we had a lady invite us to see a wonderful food. Now, you know what that does for me? That just encourages me like that. I mean, you say, you worried about food? No, but I, I appreciate somebody that cares. And you, I'm not talking about you got to do it for me. I'm not saying that. But you do it for somebody this week. You help somebody and you be a blessing to them. And you watch God, you get their attention. Somebody's got to live for Jesus and somebody, somewhere. It, you know what? Just this week, when you, somebody's going through a line, they say, well, I ain't got no money to pay for this. Pay for it. Now, I kid people all the time. I say, you ain't got to pay for us. You know? I say, why don't you pay for me? You well, I'm saying we got to interact. Don't get mad at people because they're not like you. People are hurting. Jesus said they're hurting. They need help. <coughs> So let's pray together. Now, would you be willing to say yes to Jesus today about this? Just say, Lord, I don't, I, I'm not telling you that I know how because I don't know how. But I want you, if you want anything you want in my life, I want to do it. I want to be a blessing this week to someone somewhere. I want to encourage people to know Jesus before it's too late. And I pray you'll convict them. I'll go and you, if you're convicted, I'll do what you call me to do. And I want you to help me. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Help us to go in your power, Father. We need your help. And Lord, the tears, we need tears over those that's perishing. Those that were, we forget this, Father. We get so busy down here in this world that we forget that they're going to face eternity without you. Lord, help us to remind us who to pray for, what to do, and to walk with you. We want to love you like we should. Go with us in power. Thank you for our people. And we pray for your encouragement in all of our lives. Lord, we're not anything. We know that. And we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Lord bless you. Appreciate you. Love you. <clears throat>